from a nerd boy standpoint, yes. you got to wear the suit. A uh, suit. Uh, yeah. I think from a human, regular human being standpoint, if I gave it to you, you would be feeling sympathetic for me. What? It's not, I mean, I make it look good and like, you worked it, it. like it doesn't actually weigh 60 pounds, but it does. And you can't touch your, your face, you can't scratch if you have an itch, you can't sit. It's, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. So you were very psyched on the last day of, of suit shooting. Yeah, I mean, I was so happy to get the film and then they said, now you have to wear this. And I was like, that sucks. That's my contract. <laughs> yeah. And they went, no, actually, it is in your contract. You look at paragraph four, <laughs> line six. But when, you know, because everybody that knows the Iron Man lore mm -hmm. uh, knows that in, in this storyline, your character really gets bumped up into a very central, like, like uh, yeah. So it must be really cool, because I know you read great comic books, to, to know that you're going to be part of this, like, Marvel Universe. Well, I was hope. I mean, in, 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 in the, you know, as we go forward in the Iron Man War Machine story, Iron Man actually dies. You know, and Tony Stark dies and War Machine takes over. And I thought that was going to happen in this film. So I was really disappointed when at the end he was still walking around. I was like, I thought you were supposed to, and then I just. We all waited at the end of the credits for that like little secret like twist. Oh, me too. You know, like Tony like walking and just. I started over. to just kill him because I thought, well, that'll just fix it. But I guess I have to wait till Iron Man 3. To be an actor to kind of like come in to a film where everybody's kind of worked together so so closely in the first time around, um, how did you kind of like integrate yourself onto like the cool table or like was it, I mean did they, were they like, come on, no, there's a place no, for you or did I they like move No, up? no, there was a separate, <laughs> tray there, over? yeah, it was a separate table, you know, the lunch room, I had to sit at the separate table and people would throw shit at me. It was not, they should have been better about it and they weren't, but you know, it's all right, I, revenge is just, Dish best served cold. I gotta ask who was on your table then? Was it you, Scarlett? No, just me. Oh. <laughs> just me. Scarlett was not, was not part of it? No, she started to sit by me one time and Gwyneth was like, <laughs> and she kind of sheepishly and then walked over and sat with them. Real mean girls type Her stuff. Her with the clipboard down. and everybody wearing the vest. The exactly. Like, All right. Yeah. You see the picture. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Th then are you prepared for a third? I mean, like this is this is obviously you know this is the crazy. Well, look if it if it does well, obviously they're going to want to do more. And um, I, if the recast shuffle thing doesn't keep happening, then maybe I'll be back. <laughs> For the third one, uh, we'll see. You know, I, I don't count any chickens before they've hatched. To to work with Robert, uh, who seems like everything just is off the top of his head when he's doing. So, uh, how do you kind of approach it? Because obviously you've done. I mean, the ocean stuff. It also seems yeah. like that too. Yeah. So to kind of go in and and pretend riff. I mean, is that is that? Well, no, we riffed a lot, but I think that you know my character is uh, James Rhodey is not you know as uh, free let's say, as the Tony Stark character. So a lot of times there was uh, us having to remind ourselves that you know the banter is more one way, you know, and that uh, James is a little more serious. But at the end, we kind of get to, to free it up. It's also the first time in the movie that these characters are actually get to just be friends again. To work with him then, I mean, like, what is it like to, have you, have you had an experience with him prior and, and was, no. it, was it interesting to kind of play off? No, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, he really does keep you on your toes because he does, just go, and and uh, it's a way that we find a lot of the things is is when we interact like that. But ultimately, in a movie there, that's this effect effect heavy. You do have to decide some things and kind of go. This is what we're doing. Um, but it's a good process to find those things that you're ultimately going to lock down. Um, I just did Mickey Rourke. He's awesome. Oh, did you? So, yeah. And, you and just did him. How, how was it? Rough, you know. I'm telling you. Oh, I can't imagine <laughs> anything else. Yeah. <laughs> really? Um, but, yeah. That part yeah. is surprising. Because he just um, told me to kick rocks. <laughs> um, but just to, to kind of watch a man who had come off this awesome wrestler experience mm -hmm. and then to go into something like that, what was your kind of like first day on set? Like, do you get a little bit, were you? I, I, I saw Mickey more, I've seen him more here at this press junket than I saw him on the film. You know, I saw him the one day in the Monte Carlo thing and he was on, you know, Oxygen and kind of just waved at me, and that was it. And Why was he on oxygen? Because he's out there in a hundred thousand degree heat in with that rig on, you know. So it was, uh, but I wasn't even working that day, you know. Uh, I haven't gotten to really know Mickey that much. Maybe in the next movie. Oh no, wait, he doesn't. Make that. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Damn it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.